Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. Since I just reviewed The Water Boy a few days ago, I'm about to review another movie that's also 20 years ago. Same writer, same star, same director. But came out earlier. <laughs> the Reading Singer. Yes, which is considered by several critics as one of Sandler's best romantic comedies where he had chemistry with Drew Barrymore yeah in fact this is the first collaboration with the two and yeah I can see why because I really enjoyed this movie when I first saw it uh, I actually saw it on pay-per-view uh, when I was in Oregon at the time and really loved it I mean I don't know how on earth that I actually got pay-per-view unscrambled Maybe because of the wetter conditions that was going on. But it was great to see this. Because I didn't see this in theaters. Um, on account of the fact that you know, I was busy uh, at middle school and all that. But um, surprisingly this was a hit. It opened at number two at the box office behind Titanic. Which <laughs> was at the time was at number one couple months uh, in a row until April but I really love this film I never get tired of it uh, I love the fact that this is set in the 80s 1985 to be exact the year I was born the year that Thundercats premiered the year that we had a lot of classic 80s films like The Goonies Back to the Future the Breakfast Club, but of course we also had 80's music so it really serves its purpose 80's fashion that was going on <laughs> and it's fun I love it um, and this is of course a totally awesome edition mm, could have done so much better with this release uh, I know they also released this on Blu-ray as well, which the transfer isn't perfect. I mean, they just use your typical DNR and edge enhancement. But otherwise, uh, it's a decent transfer compared to uh, this release. Because um, this is their second release after their original DVD release, which is the theatrical cuts. And it had um, a few extras as well which has the, uh, the karaoke tracks, the trailer, the, the cast and crew uh, bio. Yeah. Well, this release uh, just has um, the extended cut of the same movie, uh, which only has one extended scene, and that was this, the one where yeah, Robbie Hart, played by Adam Sandler, was making a conversation with his mother, Rosie, who's played by Ellen Arbardini Dow, yeah, where she was just uh, lifting up some weights, well, just one weight of a, of a bar, and she was just making conversation with him, you know, trying to find the right girl, even though she she just threw in a, a penis joke just before uh, Julia, who's played by Drew Barrymore, yeah, the waitress just uh, came by to ask him for a double date and that's where it has that awkward conversation <laughs> but whatever um, that's pretty much what it is but the rest is the same I mean you got uh, Steve Buscemi in an uncredited role as the <laughs> as the drunken friend but he's also the singer as well uh, you also got Peter Dante uh, who we last saw him in, in the wedding, in the Water Boy. Yeah, the one who called uh, Bobby Boucher Needle Dick. Yeah, but hey, he's cool. Uh, you even got um, John Lovitz, <laughs> who's also uncredited uh, as another singer, and you even got Christine Taylor from the Brady Bunch movies. What? Well, yeah, the first two. Yeah, the Brady Bunch movies, but she was also in the TV show Hey Dude, 
And of course, she's the wife of Ben Stiller. And so, and so people in the movie. So the uh, special features in this release has um, just has the, the behind the scenes of their upcoming uh, wedding singer musical, which this was at the time in 2006. So this is when the release came out, and. It just has those 80s mixed tracks where it just shows you several clips and it has all the trivia behind all these songs that's featured in the movie. So, And just the trailer. This is a nice trailer. I, I loved it. But it's nothing special. Just like the previous uh, DVD. And it's a shame because this is a very good movie and it really deserves more features. It definitely deserves a behind-the-scenes featurette, deleted scenes, if they even had some that were filmed, besides that one extended scene, and um, maybe some more featurettes, too, to bring some love to it. Um, so that's a shame. But other than that, though, um, still a good movie. Uh, so let's review it. It stars Adam Sandler, Drew Barrymore, Christine Taylor, Jodie Freeland, Ellen Covert, yes, of course, heavyweights and <laughs> and several of the Sandler films. Angela Featherstone, yes, for those who don't know, she was actually uh, played uh, Jennifer's friend in the TV show Mr. Belvedere. Yeah, the one who keeps um, making fun of uh, his name. <laughs> uh, Matthew Glave. Ellen Arbadini Dow, yes, uh, the actress who's been in several films. I believe she played the mother in Happy Gilmore. I think that was her. Uh, but she was also in the TV series Keen and Kill as, uh, yes, Elfo, <laughs> who keeps uh, you know, shopping at Rigby's grocery store that Keenan works. Yeah, Chris is the boss. <laughs> She's no longer with us, sadly. Also, another one that's no longer with us, Alexa Arquette, whose real name is Robert. Yeah, he was in the movie Pulp Fiction. Yeah, the one with, with the guy in the bathroom with that big gun. Yeah, and he shoots, he was about to shoot at the Jules and, and <laughs> Vincent. But yeah, he changed his gender became a woman and that's how he changed his name uh, he later went on to do the film Bride of Chucky so again he's he she no longer with us Christina Pickles uh, Frank Severo from Cop and a Half yeah one of the villains Billy Idol yes Billy Idol the singer makes an appearance at the end of the movie, yeah, spoiler, that's okay. Kevin Nealon, Stephen Brill, Peter Dante, with Steve Buscemi in an uncredited role, and John Lovitz, also an uncredited role. It's written by Tim Hurley and it's directed by Frank Carussi. The movie begins set in Richfield, New Jersey in 1985. We meet Robbie Hart, who's a wedding singer, played by Adam Sandler. And he's very nice, charming, and entertaining. But he's engaged with his longtime girlfriend named Linda, who's played by Angela Fetterstone, who fell in love with him after he, he dreamed of becoming a rock star. But he meets and suddenly befriends a very nice and cute waitress named Julia Sullivan, who's played by Drew Barrymore, at the reception hall, where she's being newly employed, and not only that, but she's being engaged by her fiance, who happens to be a businessman, you know, who's, who's into uh, Miami Vice. Yeah, he dresses up like Don Johnson, he even has a nice DeLorean. <laughs> Yeah, while they played the Miami Vice theme, named 
Glenn Puglia, who's played by Matthew Cave, who turns out to be a complete jerk. But hey, we know this cliche, and we already know how that's going to happen, but let's get to it. He has a best friend named Sammy, who's played by Alan Covert. Yeah, he goes around uh, dressing up like Michael Jackson and wearing that furlough costume, yeah, with the <laughs> silver glove. Uh, he also uh, prepares to actually drive uh, for the wedding yeah, as a limo driver, which <laughs> he accidentally ran over two cones as a test. Uh, but he's a cool guy. He promised to sing at their wedding so that way things will go natural as planned. But on Robbie's wedding day, his sister Kate tells him that Linda has changed her mind about the wedding, and that's when he became sad and depressed, yeah, and angry too, for, for the last couple days. Yeah, then Linda somehow visits Robbie the following day and, and <laughs> tells him that you know, they just can't work out with each other, and, well, that sucks. So, after that, uh, Robbie started to spend more time with Julia, trying to, just to prepare for the wedding, and not only that, try to find some notes to sing that she wants, you know, with the help of his mother, um, Rosie, who's played by Ellen Obadini Dow. As far as this is concerned, this is where, um, and this is where we're going to get to. Uh, Julia's cousin Holly, who was played by Christine Taylor, had offered a double date uh, with Robbie and and Glenn, so they decided to go out to uh, a club, you know, just to uh, have some drinks and some food, like fries, yeah, chili fries or so, and. Um, yeah, this is when Robbie was about to um, make conversations with Glenn about how they're going to get married and then they're going to change their last name from. So that means it'll be Julia Gulia. <laughs> yeah, because it rhymes. Um, of course, Julia got sick from drinking that rum. Yeah, so she vomited. So she wasn't feeling very well. So yes, um, Holly decided to take her back home, or at this rate, take her to uh, Glen in the DeLorean, so that way she'll be able to feel better at home. Well, uh, somehow uh, Holly wanted Robbie to, just want him to go to her house and just make love, since she just kissed him, but somehow, um, because he began to find out that Julia's fiance is rich, that he wants to become rich too. And he just did a song that he just created <laughs> um, in the middle of it while you know, John Lovitz's character, uh, Jimmy Moore, was just uh, <laughs> just doing that, uh, just doing a song. So yeah, Fane's uh, were going pretty confused by both Robbie and Julia because by that point, now they begin to wonder if they're starting to have more chemistry because uh, Julia begins to find out that he's actually marrying the wrong guy, which led to bigger troubles because that's when Robbie found out that yes, Glenn was hanging out with all the girls, they had a fight. Glenn punches him in the nose, just when the, <laughs> the old man was going to punch him, uh, just when they went to a bar. Uh, just after um, Julia just calls uh, Robbie an asshole, after he was uh, already preparing an interview with, uh, with the bank manager, played by Kevin Nealon as Mr. Sims. Um, so yeah, he, he felt heartbroken wants up getting drunk at the bar and then it leads to uh, bigger troubles when Julia decided to take Glenn 
all the way to Las Vegas so they can get married. So they took a plane while Robbie was about to go after them, only to discover that, yes, he was in the same plane with them. He took first class. And that's where we get to see Billy Idol. <laughs> you know, just when Robbie was about to make conversations with the rest of the guys about the mistake that Julie is making, so Bobby is there just to stop him, but he decided to come up with his own song just to make it up for her. Um, so yes, uh, <laughs> uh, Billy Idol came to the rescue uh, with the rest of the, with the stewardess and, and the other people, yeah, just pushing out all the carts out of the way. Because there was a scene where where the cart actually hits uh, Julia's uh, elbow, which, yeah, this is where Glenn actually explains to her about that he didn't want to sit over there. Yeah, was, and then he even asked Julia that he should have brought in a, a Heineken. Yeah. God, you're such a jerk. But at least he got what he deserved. So that's when the. <laughs> Robbie finally uh, made up, sang a song to her. Yeah, we're all old together. <laughs> that was the song, and they got married. Um, you know, with uh, <laughs> with David Beltry, yeah, Steve Buscemi, just singing the song "True." Yeah, and there you go. Uh, it's a very sweet movie. Um, really love it. Um, no doubt about it, Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore had terrific chemistry together. really shows. A um, lot, lot of hilarious scenes uh, going on, like, for example, uh, uh, you got uh, George uh, Stittler is just doing an, an invitation to Boy George and just sing just the same song, Do You Really Want to Hurt Me? And he's not even singing any of the other songs by the Culture Club, such as uh, Tumble For You or Karma Chameleon, or even in the Church of the Poison Mine. Uh, it's just, do you really want to hurt me? That's the only song that you think of. Especially on the Bar Mitzvah, too. <laughs> yeah, because uh, uh, that. That one moment, too, uh, Robbie was just, uh, as a wedding singer, just singing all these songs like You Spin Me Around and even singing the other song, Love Stinks, you know, when he got broken up. And then the the father of, of the groom, might be the daughter or, or the husband. Anyway, just actually punches him in the face, but then the rest of the gang just gained up to, to him and bit him in the leg. Yeah, it's like I almost wish Robbie had punched him back in the face. Because he, yeah, he actually called him, you're the worst wedding singer ever. <laughs> There's also a moment where um, Robbie was the singer at the Bar Mitzvah. Yeah, just after he had a fight. Well, <laughs> he offered Julia as the waitress to actually dance with... Uh, a fat kid, and the fat kid, of course, was from the movie Matilda, <laughs> and it was just really funny too because he he wants to grab in her ass, and then everyone else was doing the same too while they were dancing. <laughs> yeah, Robbie was doing the same too. <laughs> that was a uh, hilarious moment. And yes, there's even a moment uh, when when Linda came over the following day after the wedding, since he stood him up, and this is where we had this particular line. You're late. I'm sorry. I just couldn't do it. Well, you needed more time. I guess I could wait. No. I don't need more time, Robbie. I don't ever want to marry you. Gee, you know that information 
really would have been more useful to me yesterday. I've been talking to my friends the last few days. Oh boy, here it comes. And I think we figured out what's been bothering me. I am not in love with Robbie now. I'm in love with Robbie six years ago. Robbie, the lead singer of The Final Warning. I used to come watch you when you were in your silk suit and spandex pants and you were singing the microphone like you were David Lee Roth. I still got the spandex. I'll put them on right now. The point is, I woke you up this morning and realized I'm about to get married to a wedding singer? I'm never going to leave Richfield. Why do you want to leave Richfield? We grew up here. Our friends are here. It's the perfect place to raise a family. Oh yeah, sure. Living in your sister's basement with five kids and while you're off every weekend doing wedding gigs at a whopping six bucks a pop. One thing you could have brought to my attention yesterday! <laughs> and then the one of the kids came over and says, Hey Linda! You're a bitch! <laughs> of course the two kids would also uh, tell Robbie that you're going to a mental institution. Uh, yeah, I mean, just making all these jokes after he's all broken up. And it definitely has some classic 80s songs so for the soundtrack. It really works. Um, even at the end credits, uh, there was a bit of a, a cover version of Video Kill the Radio Star by the President of the United States. Yeah, that's the name of the band, by the way. <laughs> but it was pretty nice. Um... Nice tribute to uh, the Boogles. Cause that happens to be the song that was the first music video that was played on MTV when the channel launched. <laughs> yeah, that's a great cast too. Um, yeah, Christine Taylor as Holly was very cute. Yeah, basically dressed up like Madonna. Um, she has a bit of uh, <laughs> Marsha Brady in there. Uh, I mean, for, for the facial expressions. Uh, Ellen Aberdini Dow, yeah, she was the best uh, part of the film. She's very adorable. Uh, especially when she was doing the rapper's delight at the end of the, the movie, which is really sweet, but funny too. I uh, also love the moments between uh, her and, and Robbie, especially the scene where she actually. Uh, grab him the the two meatballs that she had to put on on his hands just to try out the the right one see if that one's good <laughs> and just crushes it love that I know there's a lot of jokes um, but you know what I'm gonna keep it that way um, that was just memorable <laughs> of course uh, Matthew Clay playing Glenn complete jerk, but I gotta say, he's, he's very casual, so he was good, but damn, why does the casual guys have to be assholes in this movie, but that's what we had to go for. Angela Fitterstorm was good as Linda, uh, even though, yeah, she's the one that broke up with Robbie, uh, stood him up at the wedding, even wears that Ben Halen shirt at the end when Robbie got drunk. So, trying to make it up for him, but it didn't work out since Robbie just moved on. Um, but back to uh, Sandler and Barrymore. Uh, Sandler was just very nice, entertaining, hilarious. Um, always fun to look for him. He has that, uh, that fuzzy hair. But sweet. And Drew Barrymore is very beautiful, very pretty, with that blonde hair that cut out. Um, I even love that moment uh, when they were making conversation and yeah, they're just sitting uh, on the porch while he was just helping out uh, a kid who just drank and threw up on the dumpster. And then he was just making a nice conversation while well, she was just drinking some coca-cola 
And <laughs> he made a conversation saying, I hope that's not rum in there. Yeah. And yeah, there was another moment too where he was laying in the dumpster after he got beaten up. But, yep. This is where, um, has a nice conversation too. <laughs> where they were just having wedding plans and have him as their wedding singer. <laughs> yeah. But it's a fun movie. I loved it. Love the 80s songs, love the fashion, uh, love everything about it. So. Didn't have any problems with it, so there you go. That's the winning singer, and I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.